This is the fifth revision video in a series about chemical analysis. It covers the key points from the GCSE chemistry specification for AQA, but you do also need to know the details of this test for required practical 11 of A-level chemistry. By the end of this video, you should know how to use sodium hydroxide or another source of hydroxide ions to identify copper 2 plus ions, iron 2 plus ions, iron 3 plus ions, and calcium, magnesium, and aluminium ions. You should also know how to write the symbol equations for the first five of these reactions. The first of the test tube reactions that we're going to use in trying to identify ions is a test for cations. So remember these are positive ions, they're usually made by metals, and the way that we're going to test for them is by adding sodium hydroxide. Now sodium hydroxide and indeed other group 1 hydroxides are soluble, um, but when you start looking at group 2 and when you start looking at the transition metals, then you start to produce hydroxides that are insoluble, so they'll make a precipitate. And a precipitate is a solid that is formed in a solution during a chemical reaction. So, if I add a little bit of sodium hydroxide to each of these um, tubes, then I'm going to produce precipitates with characteristic colours, and I can use the colour to identify what the ion present is. So first up, I've got copper, and if I add the sodium hydroxide, you can see it was already blue, but now at the top you can see there's a sort of a blue solid, a blue precipitate being formed, and that is copper hydroxide. And then likewise, this next one is iron 2 plus ions, because remember, iron being a transition metal has multiple stable ions. Um, so these are the iron 2 plus ions. And they produce this characteristic sort of dark green colour. And then in contrast to that, iron 3 plus ions produce a much more orangier colour. So if you think about rust, that's hydrated iron oxide and it's iron 3 oxide. So, you know, this is rusty coloured because that's the colour that we would expect all iron compounds um, to turn. Now, my last three are a little bit harder to tell the difference between because they all form white precipitates. So these are calcium and magnesium and aluminium salts, and you can see they don't look identical to each other, but they are all forming a white precipitate. So that's not hugely useful. It means I can tell that it's one of the three, but I can't tell which one it is. However, if I add an excess of sodium hydroxide, then aluminium ions um, will redissolve. So if we have a look at that, still very much precipitate. Still not really seeing any change. But with this last one, it's not very easy to see on the video, but around the sides we can see it's starting to redissolve. If I lift the camera up slightly so you can see the top of the tube, the top of the tube is starting to sort of clear out, and that is very much starting to redissolve. If I compare it to the other two, you can see they're still opaque, they still have precipitates, but my aluminium is separating out. Now, if I wanted to tell the difference between the calcium and the magnesium, there is a way I can do that, and I could use a flame test, because obviously um, when I put those compounds into um, the clear part of the Bunsen burner flame, I would be able to see that the calcium compound would give me a nice brick red, orange red flame. For GCSE chemistry, you need to be able to write symbol equations for five out of those six reactions. You don't need to write them for aluminium because this is actually a slightly complicated process that we don't cover until year 13 of A-level chemistry. So counterintuitively, ionic equations are actually easier to get your head around for this process than symbol equations, so we're going to start there. For each one of these reactions, you have your metal cation with either a 2 plus or 3 plus charge, and then the aqueous hydroxide ions, which have a single negative charge. In our final compounds, those positive ions need to be balanced out by the negative ions so that overall the compound has no charge. 
And so the number, the magnitude on the cation is going to tell you how many hydroxide ions you need. For the first four ions with their two plus charges, you're going to need two hydroxide ions. And for the final one, you're going to need three. Now for the hydroxides, we've obviously got the metal and we've then got the hydroxide ion. And so because we're putting in multiples of the entire hydroxide ion, we need brackets around that. So for instance, for copper, because we've used two hydroxide ions, we have copper brackets OH brackets two. And then it's going to look the same for iron two, for calcium and for magnesium. And then for the iron three plus iron, we have FeOH three. The reason that the symbol equations are harder than the ionic equations is that you need to be really mindful of the extra spectator ions, those anions that are bonded to the cations at the start. So we start off by looking at the cations in turn and figuring out what the formula of the hydroxide would be, just like we did with the ionic equations. So we can do this quite straightforwardly. For the two plus ions, we're going to have two hydroxides in the compound. And then for the iron three plus, of course, we're going to need three hydroxide ions. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to look at the anions in the compound that you're starting with. And you need to figure out how many single positively charged sodium ions is it going to take to balance out that anion. So for instance, in this first example here, we've got chloride ions and chloride ions have a single minus charge. So one chloride ion will bond together with one sodium ion. This gives us NaCl. But we don't have one chloride ion in this first example, we have two. And that means I'm going to need two sodium chlorides. So therefore I'll need two sodium hydroxides to provide those two sodium chlorides, not to mention the two hydroxide ions I need to make copper hydroxide. You can see already why this is quite so complicated. Then for the second example I've picked here, we've got iron two nitrate. We already know that this is going to make iron two hydroxide and each one of those nitrate ions has a single negative charge. If I didn't know that already, I can figure it out by the fact that it takes two of them to balance out the iron two plus charge. So each one of those nitrate ions, just like the chloride ions in the previous example, is going to go in a one to one ratio with sodium. So I'm going to have NaNO3. And as in the previous example, I'm actually going to need two of that sodium nitrate in order to use up all the nitrate ions that I have. And therefore I'm going to need two sodium hydroxide. In this third example, we've got a sulfate ion and a sulfate ion has a two minus charge. If you didn't know that, you could figure it out by the fact that one sulfate ion balances out one calcium ion. Now that means that actually one sulfate ion can take up two sodium ions. So we've got Na2SO4. And therefore, in order to produce that, I'm still going to need two sodium hydroxide. Then I've got magnesium bromide. Bromide, of course, is another group seven halide ion with a single negative charge, just like our chloride was. So we need NaBr and we're going to need two of those because there are two bromide ions. So we need two sodium hydroxide. By now you're probably starting to think, actually, this isn't so bad at all. So we've thrown in a really tricky one at the end. Here we've got our iron three plus ions. And again, these are together with those sulfate ions. And remember, they had a two minus charge. So because the, the sulfate has a two minus charge, it's going to make sodium sulfate with a formula of Na2 SO4. Now that would lead you to believe that we would need two sodium hydroxide, but there's a problem. The iron hydroxide we're making isn't iron two hydroxide, it's iron three hydroxide, and we need three hydroxide ions. So in order for us to reconcile the fact that we need two sodiums, but three ions, what we're actually going to need to do is to use six sodium hydroxide. And that will allow us to have two iron three hydroxide and three sodium sulfate. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I didn't scare you off too much with those simple equations at the end. They are one of the hardest things in the entire GCSE and well worth spending some time with a flashcard learning by heart. If you did find this video useful then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE chemistry coming soon.